Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are doing double angles. Now double angles work exactly like compound angles. The only difference is because the angle is repeated, it seems to be a simplified version. Now we would usually use double angles when we have identities. Because identities work exactly how you had previously worked with them in grade 11. The only difference in identities in grade 12 and identities in grade 11 is that identities would work with the first rule being expand all double angles. But when you look at your cos 2a, you'll notice there are three options. So if you are looking at your identity, look at what is in your identity. If your identity has only causes, then you would use the identity that has 2 cos squared minus 1. If you have an identity that has only sins, then you use 1 minus 2 sin squared theta. But if you have an identity that has cos and sin, then you use this one. Now it doesn't really matter which one you do. If you take any one, eventually the final sum works out. But by making the correct decision earlier, you make the equation easier for you to solve later. After you expand double angles, you're going to go and you're going to do all your previous work where you would change everything to sin and cos. Now this is back to your grade 11 work. Once you change everything to sin and cos, you're going to use your algebra. Basic factorizing, solve for x, getting common LCDs. And one odd or rare thing is that when you get a number, a constant, especially one that is in front. Break it down to twos. Right. So you would notice that most of the rules are exactly the same as you had done identities in grade 11. The only difference is expand your double angles. Let's do the following example. 1 minus cos 2a all over sin 2a is equal to 10a. We know that 10a is equal to sin over cos. Now, if we're expanding, it's always easy to expand sin 2a because there's only one choice. So we have 2 sin a cos a for the denominator. But on the top, we know we want a sin a. We also know that we have to cancel a sin a at the bottom. We have a few choices. We have cos squared a minus sin squared, 2 cos squared minus a, and 1 minus 2 sin squared a. Now, because I want a sin on top, I would usually take 1 minus 2 sin squared a. So in place of cos 2a, I am going to choose 1 minus 2 sin squared a. Now remember, because it is two terms, when you put a minus, you must put a bracket. 1 minus 2 sin squared a. Because the minus outside will affect both terms inside. So now I have 1 minus 1 plus 2 sin squared a all over 2 sin a cos a. 1 minus 1, 0. So we're left with 2 sin squared a all over 2 sin a cos a. So we're left with 2 sin squared a all over 2 sin a cos a. The 2's can cancel out. 1 sin on top can cancel out with 1 at the bottom. And you're left with sin a over cos a. Making right hand side equal to left hand side. Right. Now, when we are given an identity, but usually there is a number in front, then it is advisable to break down into twos. Look at the following example. When you look at the example, 
if you are going to expand to expand 16 a you're going to expand and then you're going to have 8 and then you're going to have 4 it's going to be a long process if you start expanding the double angles 2 a 4 a cos a then you're also going to end up with a super large question so even though the general rule is to expand double angles you must be wary at certain double angles that have a big hint right in front 16 16 is a multiple of 2 which means when you have a multiple in front and you see sins and causes running together it is advisable that you break down the 16 so 16 would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 and then we have sin a cos a times cos 2a cos 4a cos 8a the biggest giveaway was 16 now look at what we have what does 2 sin a cos a give us that part gives us sin 2a now we still have our 2 times 2 times 2 and then we have cos 2a cos 4a and cos 8a look again now we have a 2 a sin and a cos that becomes sin 4a because we are joining we are using the basic rule that says 2 sin a cos a is equal to sin 2a so basically we're doubling the angle now I have the 2 I have a sin of an angle and a cos of an angle which now gives me sin and then we double the angle what else is still left we have the 2 times 2 we've now made this entire thing sin 4a then we have cos 4a cos 8a again we have a 2 sin 4a cos a applying the same rule 2 sin a cos a which will give me sin 8a so I'm going to carry down this 2 and I'm going to bring down the cos 8a looking at our last rule again it's 2 sin a cos a rule giving us sin 16a right so when you are looking at your double angles the best thing to remember about double angles is that you should normally expand and then it's all your general rules of identities you must be familiar with your grade 11 work when you have the rare case where you see double angles increasing and you see a multiple of two then you would break it down and you would join Thank you for watching.